Hey, I'm Randy and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we talk about high value hi-fi, home theater, and headphone equipment. And today, we're talking about the topping DX3. I just did a review on the DX5. This is the DX3 Pro Plus. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about the topping DX3 DAC amp. It's a headphone amp with a DAC. Today's sponsor is Sith Audio, audiophile, squishy, old kind of bananas. When you maybe want to get, eat a banana, but you probably just need to wait a few more days to make banana bread out of them, get yourself a handful of Sith Audio audiophile bananas. Um, it comes in, this is a pack of four, $99.99. Guaranteed to sound great when they're kind of gross when you eat them. But if you wait a couple of days, it can be delicious banana bread but you need to use Sith Audio audio file flour. Listen, we're desperate here for sponsors, okay? They got a lot of bananas they need to move out of the warehouse. It's getting a mess in there. Lots of flies and stuff. All right, okay, all right. So I just did a review of the DX5. Thought it was okay. It's 430 bucks, I think, has the balanced output for the headphone. 6.35 millimeter connection, balanced outputs on the back, Bluetooth, you know, the normal stuff you get with a DAC amp these days. Headphone amp with a DAC, Bluetooth. Headphone amp with Bluetooth, $200. So the DX5 has a pair of Sabre chips. I don't know, they're the latest and greatest Sabre chips. This one has a Sabre 9038 QTM, Q2M, which is a very popular Sabre chip utilizing a lot of DACs right now. Sounds great. This also has a headphone amp right here on the front. It's a 3.5 millimeter output. So this, not gonna go in here. The irony is out of all the headphones that I own, and I own a few at this point, 95% of them have a 3.5 millimeter jack. So you just pop one of these on there. And then you're rocking and rolling if you have a bigger headphone amplifier. So I don't know if people are complaining about the 3.5 millimeter connection. I don't have a problem with it because that means they probably saved money. This is very light. I can hold up my Bluetooth antenna in my mouth without fear of breaking my teeth because it's pretty light. This is probably double the weight of the DX3. DX5, twice as heavy as the DX3. Doesn't mean it's twice as good though. So on the front, fairly easy, right? You got some volume control and it's got a very satisfying clicky clicky. I don't know why I love that, but I do. Pretty decent display here. Nothing fancy, it's just a bunch of LED lights. I'll show you some pictures. And then one single 3.5 millimeter headphone output. The claimed specifications on this amplifier are 1800 milliwatts into 32 ohm headphones, 900 milliwatts into 64, I believe, and I think 250. Why don't I double check this? I was actually right. So it's uh, 1800, 1.8 watts into 32 ohms, 900 into 64 ohms, and then 250 into 300 ohm headphones. I use the Hyphaman Edition XS. Probably my favorite somewhat decently priced headphone. Okay, $500. They're very, very good though. That's what I listened to on the DX3, the DX5, and I also compared it to the Gashelli Labs J2 and the Gashelli Labs Arkle 2.5 XL. Compare and contrast, that's what I did. Except it wasn't Catcher in the Rye and one flew over the cuckoo's nest or Lord of Lord of Flies. Is that it? It was headphone amps and DAX. Although I guess you could listen to an audio book of Catcher in the Rye and then compare and contrast those. DAX always have a ton of features now. I like the Schkit DAX, I like the Gashelli Labs DAX, and then I like the uh, Denifreps DAX. Why? Because they don't have any of this craziness, okay? They don't have a bunch of roll-offs, modes, or anything like that. You plug it in, you turn it on, and then you put your headphones into a headphone amp, okay? It doesn't matter, though, because the Topping DX3 Pro Plus has a bunch of seven different filter settings. 
I played around with them a little bit. You may or may not, your mileage may vary on whether or not you can hear a difference with the roll-off modes, but they're there. And you know that they're there because there's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that shows up uh, in orange lights. It also has a few different modes. So it has headphone amp mode. It has headphone amp plus DAC mode. It has straight DAC mode, which is a fixed output. So you can't control, if you do this, it's not gonna do anything. And then it has kind of a preamp mode where you can control the volume, which it also comes with a remote control. This one, it's the same remote control for literally every topping product, but that's okay, it works. And if you have more than one topping product, it'll work on everything. Except there is a difference between this remote and the remote that's used for their DAC speaker amps. They're different. So different filter modes. There's two different gain settings, plus six and plus 19 dB. Then it also has Bluetooth. The codex that it utilizes is LDAC, which is a good codec. Codec is basically how the data is packaged, sent, and unpacked. It's not really sent, but packaged and unpacked. LDAC can package and unpack more data than Aptex, Aptex LL, SBC, AAC. But this does have AAC. That's important if you're an Apple user because AAC is the codec that you have to use with Apple or SBD, SBC. SBC. So it has Bluetooth. It has very well output, which means you can use this as a soundbar replacement brain. You take your TV into here, and then you plug this into a speaker amp, and then you control volume with your remote control. Then you can sit back, and actually, the display on this thing is big enough and bright enough, you can actually see what you're doing from your chair, probably 10 feet away. Maybe not 30, maybe not 50, less than 20 depending upon your eyesight, usable display. We have full-sized USB. Let me get closer. Let's see if you can get closer, closer. Full-size optical, full-size coaxial, two coaxials, and then an RCA output. It's kind of cool, it has two coaxials. Then it has a 15 volt power supply, which is a little brickish power supply. But it's just a wall wart. So it's not like a brick, it's a wall wart. This is how big it is compared to a tube. This is how big it is to a random piece of wood that I cut. This is how big it is compared to somber audiophile monkey. This is how big it is compared to Boba Fett, Boba Fett, okay? About the same height. If you put this on, yep, Boba Fett's about the same height as if you put the DX3 Pro Plus on the end. So I hope you have a better understanding of just how big this thing is. So I found that this thing had enough juice to drive just about anything. However, when I first connected it, I was maxing it out on volume. I figured I had a gain setting messed up, but I didn't. Actually, whatever I did, it didn't matter. I was maxing this thing out. But when I unplugged the USB and re-plugged it back in, miraculously, everything started working Fine. And I was comparing it directly to the DX5, which has similar power specifications. So I think whatever it's claiming, 1800 milliwatts, is accurate. Either that or there's a giant conspiracy with the topping corporation to fool you into thinking that you're getting more power than you really are. I felt this thing was just as powerful as the DX5. When I compared it to the Arkel, Arkel, Archel, Archel 2.5 XL from Gashelli Labs. Felt like that thing had way more juice. And on paper, it's supposed to. Two watts. Not a ton more power, but I had way more volume plate. Now that can be gain or it can be even the volume control, whatever it is. But I just felt like the Gashelli had a lot more chips in the bag, water in the bucket, peanut butter in the jar, more. If you would have told me, what I'm about to tell you, I'd have said you're full of it. But I actually like the DX3 Pro Plus better than the DX5. And it's less than half as expensive. I felt like this thing was fuller, less sibilant, and less hard on the top end than the DX5. And I went back and forth because I didn't believe my, I'm like, eh, this can't be right. Because normally lower priced DAX, a little bit harder, harsher on top, more grading sometimes. And the Edition XS are a very 
clean and clear headphones. So you get to hear everything that the DAC and the amp is serving up. Takeaway here is I prefer the sound of the DX3 over the DX5. I think there's more bass presence too. Again, kind of shocked. I was switching back and forth between them and usual suspects as far as songs, Uninvited by Alanis Morissette off the MTV Unplugged. Her voice seemed more sibilant on the DX5 compared to the DX3. Also more bass presence, warmer, thicker, more organic. This sounds more realistic than the DX5. I was very surprised. Also sounded a bit more open. Like the soundstage seemed a little bit bigger too. And I'm not trying to pick on the DX5 because I didn't give it a great review. But if you don't need balanced outputs as a preamp, because the balanced headphone output on the DX5 is not really balanced headphone output. I don't really see a reason to get the DX5 because this exists at half the price, unless you really want it. I mean, that one has MQA. I don't think this one has MQA. If it does, I couldn't get it to work because I was listening to the title. I don't really care about MQA though. I'm not saying MQA is bad. If you like MQA, great. I like Tidal, but I don't get too upset if something doesn't have MQA. Generally speaking, I kind of like DACs that don't have MQA because then they're not paying the licensing fee to get MQA and then passing that cost on to you. This one's passing the savings on to you. And I think this enclosure is exactly like some of the other topping products like the speaker amp. So you're saving money on the enclosure too. Overall, I have zero complaints about the DX3 Pro Plus. If I gave out recommendations, DX3 Pro Plus Pro Plus would get a highly recommended. It's 200 bucks. So if you're just getting into headphone listening, this is gonna have you covered. This is probably gonna drive 97.2% of the headphones out there. If you want a soundbar replacement or if you have a vintage receiver, you can put this on there. Now you have Bluetooth. Now you have a DAC. Now you have variable volume control. So what you would do is you would set your vintage receiver to about 60, 70% volume. And then you would control the volume through here with a remote control on your couch. Having a good time. All the DAC people probably need. I just did a review on the Pontus 2. I didn't compare these directly. I didn't compare this to the Pontus 2 directly, but I'm very happy with it. Other options are gonna be the Schkit stack. So the Manny and the Modi. I think by the time you pay shipping though, you're gonna be in into that for about 240 bucks. If you wanna step up, I would highly recommend the Gashelli Labs J2 and the Gashelli Labs Archel, Arkel, Ar Arkel, Arkel, remember him, Arkel? He had a tagline, I was gonna do it, but I'm not gonna do it because it's, Annoying. It was annoying then. It's probably annoying now. Arkel 2.5 XL. I would recommend those. Those are more expensive though. They're about 200 bucks a piece. So that whole stack is about $400. This is $200. But if you're considering this, I would get the Gashelli before I got the DX5. If you're thinking about these two, I would get the DX3 Pro. Plus, unless you know that there's just something that you need about the DX5. I don't see a reason for the DX5. This, however, is awesome. You can also throw this in a suitcase, your purse, carry-on luggage, your backpack. So when you're traveling with your laptop computer and you get to the hotel, you can bust this out and then listen to some sweet, sweet tunes through your headphone. Actually, this is priced so well that unless you're out on the town and you need a dongle deck, I would actually recommend this above really any dongle deck. If you have the option to plug something in, I would use this over a dongle deck. Frankly, if I'm traveling, I'm taking this with me from now on. Highly recommended DX3 Pro Plus Pro Plus from Topping. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio man. Every Sunday night we have Patreon only Zooms. It was packed recently. Over 80 people in the patron-only Zoom. We also have a patron-only Facebook group, patron-only Discord group, and then I do patron giveaways. If stuff is given to me, I give it away. Unless it's really good and I want to use it as reference, okay? You can also use the thanks button. It's down by the share button below this video. If you got any value out of this and you want to give me a dollar or two, buy me a cup of coffee, then you can use the thanks button. It's a heart.
Like this, only there's a money sign on that. I didn't even mean to do this. My daughter actually did this art. You can also use the links in the description. Those are affiliate links for the most part, which means if you click it and buy, then I do get a commission, but it doesn't cost you anymore, so it's a good way to support the channel. You can also sign up for Amazon or Tidal Music. Links in the description. If you click and you sign up, even if it's for a trial, I still get a couple of bucks. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen, maybe through your new topping, DX3 Pro Plus Pro Plus, and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.